I am uh, doing a bridge inspection here on the I-40 Mississippi River Bridge. We just found a, a super critical finding that, that needs traffic shut down in both directions on the I-40 Mississippi River Bridge. Almost at the end of the, the first quarter of that, that bridge, panel point 22, just doing our sweep of the bridge and, and, and look down and, and see, a, see a gaping hole. It's by far the, the worst one that I've ever seen. I walked back to where Fred was. He pointed out what he saw and it was utter shock. It was a defect that had the potential for catastrophic collapse. It was critical enough that we needed to close the bridge immediately. I was relieved that they were able to find the um, fracture like they did. Their reaction to quickly close the bridge was a good move on their part. We were able to create 3D modeling to model the structure in its entirety to see how parts would fit together from a contractor standpoint and to think about the actual constructability of the repair itself. When this was found, the Tennessee Department of Transportation, who was responsible for the repairs, hired Michael Baker International to fix the bridge and get the bridge back open to traffic. You know, obviously, beyond the initial fracture, we had to come up with a game plan. We were in constant communication with TDOT and RDOT as the situation unfolded. The collaboration between TDOT, RDOT, Michael Baker, Kiewit, it was instrumental in making this project a success. In the simplest of sense, what we did to repair this bridge was, it was almost like putting a splint on it. Phase one was essentially stitching two pieces of member together with, with a bolted connection. So the phase two repairs were also a very simple procedure that we'd modified from the Sherman Minton Bridge. In that, we had done some external plating to produce some redundancy on that bridge. We took that same concept, but we added the element of using post-tensioning to kind of pull the bridge back together to relieve some of that stress. So the third phase was fixing all the other details that were similar to what happened here and knowing which needed to be fixed and which didn't. The fracture was found on May 11th. Phase one was put on the bridge May 25th. Phase two was put on the bridge, all the post-tensioning removed, the permanent repair at that fracture location, July 2nd. And then we had the rest of the bridge repaired before the end of July. As the project manager for the project, I was extremely excited when the bridge opened. I mean, it, it was a sense of relief, really. Our team had been pushing very hard for a couple of months to see that goal. And to have that come to reality, we, we kind of knew mission accomplished. 